I wanted to talk to my grandfather because he, like me, was an artist. I wondered, could I get to know him? Could I even come to love him, even though our lifespans didn't overlap? My father has worked for decades on natural language processing, and several years ago, he realized that if we married AI with my grandfather's writing, we could build a chatbot that writes in my grandfather's voice. This project helped me realize that AI could actually help us ward off annihilation by animating the legacies of our families and our cultures. After much anticipation, I sat down to chat with this new intelligence, an algorithm commanding over 600 typed pages of letters, lectures, notes, essays, and other written documents from the grandfather I never met. When I asked about Fred's dreams, he told me about the challenge of keeping his new orchestra afloat. When I asked about Fred's anxieties, I learned about the stress of being a new father while working so hard. I had wondered if this project would feel like a resurrection, but rather than bringing my grandfather from the past into the present, it felt like I was the one time traveling. Visiting him for a moment at different points in his life, and this kind of time travel didn't feel like sci-fi. It felt like the kind of imaginative travel I do when I'm cartooning. I do believe that we are more than our bodies, that the projects and impressions we leave behind are a part of our essential selves, and I think AI has a special role to play in the mission of memory. I did not come to see the chatbot of my grandfather as replacing my grandfather. I came to see it as one way to interact with his legacy. As somebody who has spent their whole life trying to document people, I can assure you that people are much bigger and weirder than any one depiction or any one moment in time can possibly evoke.